Hello, everybody, and welcome to another great episode of My EdTech Life. Thank you so much for joining us on this wonderful day and wherever it is that you're joining us from around the world. As always, thank you for all of your support. We appreciate all the likes, the shares, the follows. Thank you so much for engaging with our content and all the wonderful comments. And thank you so much also for following us on all social media. We really appreciate everything that you do for us as a podcast. And as always, we do what we do for you out of our heart for education. And we always want to bring you some amazing conversations, amazing stories. And today I'm really excited to have a two-time guest on here. Um, I can't wait to introduce you to him. He is doing some amazing work. And today he's going to talk about a very special project that when I saw him post about it, I immediately reached out to him. And I said, I need to have you on the show to really tell this story. So I'm really excited to welcome back to the show, Omar Cortez, who's joining us this morning. Omar, how are you doing? I'm doing well, Fonzi. Thank you for having me again. It's good to be back and I'm excited to talk to you and be able to exchange some words with you. Excellent. Well, I'm excited. Like I said, uh, you know, right now in the intro, I, I saw you on social media. And by the way, I follow all the work that you do. You know, it comes up on my feed because of my interest in robotics as well. Just a little bit of experience that I had. Obviously, in the previous show that you were on, we talked about that and how you work with students at your district and, you know, how that program has grown. And then I saw you post about something that I it just kind of, for me, you know, because I see a lot of robotics, but then you talked about this wonderful project about this book that you have written. And I'm so excited to hear about that. But before we get into that, Omar, for all our audience members who are just getting to know you for the very first time, can you give us a little brief introduction and then what your context is within the education space? Yeah, of course. So I am uh, Omar Cortez or Mr. Cortez Robotics as um, my social media handles. Um, I have been teaching education robotics now for four years, and we also do competitive robotics. I also teach uh, drones and programming at a middle school in Dallas, Texas. Uh, we are a school for the talented and gifted in Pleasant Grove. And um, I teach all levels or different levels of robotics from intro, advanced, advanced two, and advanced three, so different sections uh, going over different things and different systems. We've done, we worked with VEX IQ and I end all the way with the VEX V5. That's excellent. And I love that, you know, and we'll talk a little bit about that too as well, because I know that your story deals a lot with that as well. But I know since the last time that you were here, we were talking about the, you know, VEX and VEX competition. And then of course, you're talking about right now, like really everything that you do now, robotics. But I want to ask you, you know, just for, you know, like I mentioned, some audience members that are getting to know you for the first time. Was that what you initiated with when you came into education? Was that the, like, you know, you said, hey, I want to go into robotics? Or was it like myself, you know, many ways as educators, we come in into the education space and then all of a sudden we kind of find our niche and then we start doing like the robotics. So can you tell us a little bit of background on that? That's exactly what it was. Um, I got certified uh, EC6, so I was able to teach elementary through sixth grade. And I had no idea where I was going with this. Um, I think at first I wanted to teach history uh, just because I was like, I knew that when I was in college, it took a class of like a technology class where um, it was just incorporating the tech and I kind of became obsessed. And so all I wanted to do was teach with technology. So um, I landed on a second grade job where I was teaching uh, everything with iPads that were like left over at the campus. And, and I mean, I was doing a story retelling right and I'd have the kids uh, create animations and videos. And, so then I fell into this technology world uh, where I eventually ended up teaching like a technology class for elementary through six. Um, and the robotics thing actually was just kind of introduced to me for uh, an after school program. And I became obsessed and just made it my personality. And so then I eventually went and got uh, tech app certified, which allowed me to teach middle school and to teach robotics. And the only reason why I went and got certified um, was because I wanted to do the V5 the big metal robots but um even then like the whole robotics thing kind of staggered it started off as just like okay this one group that will meet one hour a week and um you know it's just kind of like like a, a very very minimal thing like we would i don't know follow the instructions from something online we weren't competing we weren't doing anything 
And then eventually I got introduced to the VEX uh, competition and that's really where everything kicked off. Like I, that's when I became obsessed and I wanted to, all I wanted to do and all I thought about was working with the kids and the robots and like, it was just so much fun. And uh, once you go out there in those competitions, it, it is amazing. And I've been doing it ever since. And every year, uh, every year things keep growing and we'll start adding different programs. So I started with VEX IQ, then we wanted to do the V5 and now we're doing the drums thing. And now it's just, yeah robotics every day after school <laughs> that is wonderful and i know too that your wife is also part of that too as well correct yeah she's the one that actually introduced me to the vet robotics uh, ecosystem um the one i met her uh, we were talking and i was to um i well, the, the first time i met her we were talking about what we do as as teachers and so i was telling her i, I had like a, a an online portfolio where i used to do like all my rla things with uh the technology and you know she said that on the first day she was kind of getting a little bored and it wasn't until <laughs> i actually started um uh, talking about the robotics thing but again it was just like this minimal thing and she um and it, you know, so i was showing her like little pictures of, of the robots and i, I think the, the most extravagant in gala was we found some online instructions for like a rubik's cube solver and i was like really proud to show her that part and she was like wow like you need to just come over to our district because our district actually supports robotics like in every level you want um you know way at the at the time the world championship was in kentucky the u.s open was in iowa um and she's like our district you know if you qualify you can go, go to these events if you need parts our district will get you these parts like it's super supportive there's even a little stipend like just get into my district and it was just on that first date and then i was like okay so then i started uh Going from there, we just do it together now. Um, we're actually both at the same school now. And her and I just, uh, you know, after school, we stay together with the kids. And, you know, she helps me host multiple teams. And that's how I'm able to have such a big program now. That is amazing. And that's wonderful. And that that's such a great story. And thank you so much for sharing that. You know, like I said, it's like, it's all about telling that story. Because a lot of those moments really do lead up into a lot of the great things that are happening and not only for one personally, but as a, as a couple, you know, to be able to have that support and that's something that is huge. And so I definitely, that resonates with me as well as my wife Angelica is the exact same way with me. And that always helps. So man, that is such a, a wonderful story and look at what you both are doing now. And like I said, if you haven't followed Omar yet and, and his wife, please make sure that you do follow him on social media because we'll definitely put that info here uh, because they do some amazing things. And if you're interested in robotics, you can check out what they're doing and maybe give you some inspiration as to what you can do. But Omar, let's go ahead and talk a little bit now, you know, as how many years have you been doing this program now or do, robotics, I should say, altogether? So competitive robotics really is where, where I would put the start and so that had to be the 2019 in 2019 i started and i know that because uh -huh, that 2020 was when yeah. uh we all got said how was it we had just qualified for worlds that year uh it was my first year coaching and we didn't qualify for worlds because we had a fancy robot or a fancy program actually um we had qualified for worlds that year we didn't even make it to the final so uh for those that don't know vex uh, has like a regional or a state championship, just depending on the size of your state. And uh, we were at the championship and out of 40 teams, 20 get invited to a, a final match where they get one last uh, shot because it's all alliance based. And so you get your one last shot. And well, we didn't even make it to the top 20 uh, that year because I was just, you know, we were learning things ourselves and trying to figure things out ourselves. But we got in because of a STEM research project. And so uh, one thing that my wife always taught me in these programs is to put eggs in every single basket for um, because yeah, competition, you'll quickly learn that sometimes motors decide they don't want to work anymore, or you'll learn that autonomous codes don't work the same as they do in your lab. And so, um, you know, the VEX gives so many opportunities within the online challenges or the engineering notebooks and things like that. And, um, you know, we literally put our eggs into every single basket. And that year they had the, what was called the STEM research project. And it was really cool um, that, that that specific group of kids was able to make a prototype uh, to help the uh, visually impaired or the blind um, by using like, and they, it was all made out of uh, VEX pieces, but, and, and their VEX code, but they had, uh, got some distance sensors and they had a, like, uh, and a cane and it started off with, uh, they had three sensors, one on the head, chest and legs. Um, but then they did the whole research process and they actually, inter um, let a blind person, pr uh, prototype it and got some feedback from them. Uh, they, they reached out to, uh, an educator in our, in our district 
who came and visited them. And, and it was then when he gave them the feedback that, you know, the reason why they have a, a, a cane um, is because of steps and things like that. So, you know, if you're really trying to eliminate the cane, it's, it, you really, it, it wouldn't necessarily help because if they won't be able to detect uh, what's going on on the, uh, we don't know, steps and stuff like that. So the cane is still necessary. But uh, so then they, I think they wanted to, they attached one onto the cane itself. And so anyways, it, it was this really cool video that they made um, and, and working prototype that, and they, that blind people got to test and stuff like that. And uh, it impressed the judges. We were super excited. It was our first year doing robotics. So we're going to Worlds. And then this little thing happened. Uh, we ended up coming into a pandemic. <laughs> and uh, the Worlds got canceled. And uh, oh, they did the virtual world. But that's how I knew that that was my first year. Because uh, again, we had qualified. And we're on our way to Kentucky. We're about to load the bus. We have the meeting. And they, they ended up getting canceled. Hey, educators, ready for a game changer? I've partnered up with Goose Chase to revolutionize learning through play. This amazing platform helps students grasp key concepts, engage in epic challenges, and feel the thrill of discovery. From classroom scavenger hunts to district-wide adventures, Goose Chase turns education into an unforgettable journey. Join the movement that's making learning fun again. Visit www.myedtech.life forward slash my ed tech 10 and use code my ed tech 10 for 10 percent off any license purchase whether it's individual school or district click the link in the show description and let's make education exciting together with goose chase But I mean, but what an experience. So, you know, like you said, for the first time going into that and then being able to, you know, have some kids that are inspired by the work that you're doing, but also just really, you know, honing in on what they love to do and then finding a research project like that, where now they're taking ownership and they're the creators and they're the ones developing and you're there as the guide, you know, to help them out to, you know, again, as far as providing resources that maybe they can't get, but working together like that and just to make it based on that research and impressing the students uh, in that first year that you're making it to Worlds. I mean, I think that's something that's wonderful and a wonderful experience, not only for you that, I mean, obviously you'll remember that story, but for the students as well, because I'm sure that from that point on, you know, that's something that they took off with and now Many are still even pursuing that or, you know, just continuing that passion. And the fact that you can take that learning and apply it to just multiple, uh, you know, subjects, not necessarily just, you know, robotics, but just the thought process and all of that. So that's great. So tell me now, you know, now that you've had this experience and so on, you know, I saw this amazing post and, and I caught you like right when you were sharing about it. And then I... I sent you a message right away and then it kind of coincided because you're like, hey, I was planning on reaching out to you or to me like to to be on the show as well. But I caught you first. And so I'm really excited to hear about this story about your book that you have published and it will be being it'll be released uh, in a couple of weeks. Is that correct? Right. Uh, hopefully a couple of days. Um, OK, it, it, I'm waiting on. So I didn't realize how hard it was to publish a book, first of all. <laughs> Um, I thought it was like I could just upload it and everything was going to be good, but we're talking tenths of an inch on a cover, and, and and that's essentially what's been holding me back. The cover has finally been approved. Uh, I just I ordered my author copies, and once I see the author copies are good, then I'll go ahead and post it up online and and, and make the announcement. Hopefully within the next few days. Uh, but the book itself is a project I've been working on for about two years, and it takes place right after that uh, pandemic when we got sent home from school. So uh, first, I guess I'll start off with what it is. Uh, the book itself uh, kind of came to me uh, as an idea. I don't even know how or what, but it, well, it was a story I wanted to tell first. Um, also, um, a robotics teacher, and I know that one thing that they often push for us to do is like the cross curricular and try to figure out what we can do. So I thought it would be really easy to make like an RLA uh, cross thing and, and I can share this story. And the book also serves as kind of like a educational aspects. So I think that's what was really hard about writing this book is because I was trying to find that cross between entertainment and education. But the book itself um, will help kids and teachers get going with their first robotics program. 
because I kind of go into explicit detail on how uh, we run things in our, um, you know, in our within our team. So uh, a couple examples would be just like the resources that the kids use within the VEX libraries and uh, the research that they do before they actually even build anything, right? So, uh, you know, we research three different, um, with three different uh, versions of, of a drivetrain before they select a drivetrain. And then they do like an, uh, a decision matrix before. And, and these are all things that kind of we talk about before they make their decision on what they're going to do and why they do it. And then another one uh, would be like, uh, I have real pictures of the engineering notebook that were just animated uh, from that year in there so that, you know, kids and teachers can kind of get an idea of what goes into that notebook. And, and it goes on and on. I, I, we go into pseudocode and what pseudocode is and, and the sensors and so on and so forth. Uh, the story itself, though, uh, starts off again right after that year. So that year, um, it's funny, we, we, well, not funny, we, we ended up getting out in, in March and then the district decides to push back the entry. So we did go back to work that was August, but students did not come back to campus until October. And um, at that time, all robotics was canceled and, and there was uh, no tournaments, no nothing, but they were trying to figure out what was going on. So that October, when the kids are supposed to come back, they keep in mind, I've never met them in person because they're, it's a whole new group of kids. They come back into the, the campus that October and um, I had already signed up for what was called the Live Remote, uh, Live Remote Skills Tournament, which was essentially just a Zoom call where the kids would go and do like their best skills run. I had signed up for a tournament that Saturday. Kids came back on Monday. And this group of, I, I found uh, this group of sixth graders that were just so eager and optimistic and ready to do it. Like, Let's do it. And so they ended up building the, the hero bot that Vex has. It was like a scrap bot that was like already kind of uh, there. And they started building that and they were able to make their first competition. Well, I come to find out that the, this kid that was eager to do it, uh, Esteban, and um, he, and, and they were all special. They're all amazing. But the growth that came from this kid from that year was just impeccable. So the, the, this kid was this, uh, and that's kind of the premise of the story, is that the, this kid was such a nervous wreck. I mean, a nervous wreck when he, when he started this robotics thing. He seemed fine. Everything seemed fine. But when he steps into his first, the first tournament, and keep in mind, all it is is a Zoom call. So it's just like practice. There's a camera. And all of a sudden, he's a nervous wreck. And, and, and he's just like shaking and, and you know, it, it, all, I don't know the growth that came from that because he couldn't talk to people and he couldn't speak to judges. He couldn't speak to anyone. And all of a sudden, by the end of the year, by the end of the book, he was able to find his voice. Um, and, and, and that's kind of like what this whole thing is, just being able to find your voice through robotics. Um, earlier, I mentioned my first group of kids doing that STEM project. Well, through robotics, we still continue to do the STEM project each year. Uh, it is now online and it's now a video. The kids, you know, have to you know, have to produce these videos with the script and be able to read and and, and discuss things and, and you know and, and so you know he did that for his time with with the three years um, during robotics. The kids have to be able to interview and talk to adults. Uh, you know, just to talk about their what the robot does and and how the robot works and their programming and their challenges and their obstacles. So he's getting thrown these questions left and right. So he's kind of put on the spot. And he learns how to talk to adults through that. Uh, the alliance matches, because later on uh, in, uh, in the book and later on in the year, uh, Dan had come out with this amazing system um, com that was called the Live Remote uh, LRT. So the first one is LRS, the Live Remote Skills, which is just like a Zoom skills competition. The LRT was a, um, kind of like what you and I are doing right now, where we're both connected through these video conferences. But uh, they, they found a specific way to set up the field with like, I want to say it's two thirds of the elements on one field and two thirds of the elements on the other. And the kids have to communicate again. So robotics isn't just learning about building robots and it's not just about learning a program. You know, these kids are put into social spaces and they have to speak with adults and the interviewing and the productions of, of the different, because uh, there's a lot of videos on these online challenges. It's not even just the STEM research, that, that pro, uh, the online challenges are a great resource for the kids too. Um, and, and they qualify for worlds. But they, they have to learn to speak and speak and speak and speak. And, you know, through all that pressure of being the main driver, through the pressure of the interviews and, and all those things, the kid now can just speak to anyone as his personality. The teachers, the principal were all telling me about how much this kid is changing in classrooms, participating, always raising his hand. Um, and, and 
all that translated into the classroom and into his life. And watching this kid grow, and this is just something that is not talked about enough, Fonzie. Yeah, everyone just thinks robotics. Everyone just thinks programming and building and engineering and all that stuff. And it, it, I would say about 70% of it is that. But nobody talks about the other 30% about uh, learning to write, um, the, the, the story retelling abilities, because you have, when you're talking about your, your autonomous and your robots, it, you know, you have to come hit it with the beginning, middle, end, and you have to, you know, th those skills that are transferable to every other career in life um, are, are, are often overlooked, I would say. You know, the, the engineering notebook to be able to do procedural writings and, and um, you know, problem and solution and things like that is it's it's just not talked about. And I get it's not as exciting as as maybe building a cool robot and programming, but it is so huge. And anyways, that 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 kid's life changed and he changed my life. And it was just a story that I really wanted to tell. And so, yeah, that's kind of where the book goes. And, uh, you know, there's so much more in there. But yeah. But, you know, I, I love the way that you created this book with that intention of two things. Now, obviously, number one, telling just that amazing story and how working through robotics and learning those skills can help transform a student, build confidence, build communication skills, the team building, uh, you know, all of those soft skills, all of the problem solving skills, critical thinking, everything that goes into robotics and the way you said it is that I love is that it is cross-curricular. There's no boundaries for it. There's no bounds for it. It can be used in any classroom, which is a wonderful benefit to all of the students that are in robotics. And aside from that too, is just the, that self-confidence and that self-esteem and being able to take something from nothing and, and create and, and you have a vision and a shared vision, most importantly too, because you're working as a team to take that to the next level. That is something that's wonderful, but also the fact that you mixed in how somebody at, at any campus or school might be interested in starting a robotics program, and it's a walkthrough guide for them too as well. So I think that that is something that is very neat where you yourself too are sharing your own experience and what you have seen on the teacher side of it, and then helping guide the teacher all along telling this wonderful story of Esteban and now the teachers can probably see that they themselves too will have an Esteban in their class or within their robotics team and pay attention to those skills because you're absolutely right. These are stories that are not often talked about as much because sometimes a lot of that focus is just on the robots and they're focused. And, and I think uh, I'm going to quote Matt Miller because I, I did a... Uh, uh, a panel with Matt Miller a year ago. And it's always like we focus on the end product, but never on the process. And this is what I love that you're talking and documenting that process, not only for you as a teacher to help us as educators build a program, but also the process of Esteban finding his voice. And I think that is wonderful. And that's really <laughs> exciting that we don't, because we don't focus on that a lot. And uh, so I absolutely love that because as you were talking, it reminded me of a student that I had my last year there in the classroom for fifth grade. And I was involved in robotics, but it was really just STEM camps uh, just in the summer. I didn't do like the the when the first Lego League challenges and things of that sort. Of, I just did a little STEM camps in the summer. But since I did involve a lot of technology within the classroom, the students still got, you know, that experience. And I remember having uh, a student uh, in my classroom that last year. And uh, I'll never forget the moment in a similar way where she found her voice because she was coming in as an emergent bilingual student. She never spoke. She was very shy. And of course, you come in very self-conscious, you know, with the language and you, you just don't want to go and present and so on. You don't have that confidence. But in being able to offer, like you mentioned, you know, just a, an alternative, something that they can dive into and communicate differently, you know, such as journals or, you know, even just a Chromebook where they create a presentation. I can hear her voice very loudly by the presentations that she gave, even though she didn't vocally express it. But you can see the depth of knowledge. You you understood that they understood the content. And the wonderful part, in very similar to Esteban, is that by the end of the year, she finally raised her hand to go and present in front of the class. And the whole class was like, 
and she found her voice. And then when, when we listened to her speak, I mean, her English was just beautiful from the, the beginning of the year till the end of the year. Like, you know, just that growth and, you know, the changes that occur from class to class, like you mentioned, it's something that's noticeable because teachers, I mean, we, we look at those things and we notice those differences in students. So I, I'm, a, I'm absolutely thrilled. And like, I get really excited hearing about this story, Omar, and I'm, what, I'm thankful for the work that you're doing, you know, with your students and being able to give in, not only giving them a, a creative outlet, but also just that you know, personal space and outlet for them to really like grow and really see the potential that they have in themselves uh, and or see that for themselves and just continue to grow. Because again, at the end, you notice, you said the principal noticed it, the teachers noticed it. And then by the end, he was just wonderful at presenting, telling the stories, working as a team. And so that's wonderful, man. That is amazing. Yeah, it, 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 I mean, just I, I think it's so. Um, I think that's the the one thing that in STEM is just so overlooked, and and you're right. Like the you know, we need to take that into consideration that not everything is going to be programming and engineering. Man, those soft skills are that are developed or that are developed are so essential for all careers. And uh, hearing those, um, you know, hearing that story was is wonderful. It, it's just, yeah, the. Um, Another another thing that that was so interesting about that year is we're in a, in, in a world where nothing is necessarily making sense. There is no normalcy. And the only thing that was semi normal to us was robotics. And so, I, I, you know, I remember spending like so many hours on a Saturday because at a competition traditionally you, it is about eight hours. You you'll show up about maybe eight a.m. Maybe leave by four or five, uh, just depending on how late the tournament runs. And uh, but we're doing the same thing. But it's just like a, a zip call, and we're doing a skills tournament. And so, in, re in that sense, we used to, I used to maybe host a four hour thing because you would sign up for a slot or a window for that skills tournament. And I would sign up for like, let's just say four o'clock. Uh, we wanted to be the last team to go because we wanted to see what kind of what we're dealing with and how it was going. But what I would do is with the kids on that Saturday, with it, we'd open up the uh, gym or the library, just depending on where we were competing that day. And, and we would be hanging out with these kids, and sometimes we'd be there five, six hours practicing programming practicing skills and all this stuff before the tournament so we spent all that time together and i really think that's kind of um another reason why like those kids man i, I miss them so much they were amazing and they're all kids that i've had are amazing but we spent so much time together in this world where the only thing that was normal was robotics and it was so normal to us and we're just so passionate and it was just such a <laughs> yeah the, i still see them um they're they're still competing in high school and my kids do the, the VRC, which is like the, the metal robots a little bit more advanced. And we compete in blended events with high schools all the time. So last year, as a matter of fact, they were the team that blocked us from entering even to the state championship in that level. Um, they, my kiddos, uh, they all went to uh, uh, SEM, which again, they, uh, the, it's a school for science, engineering, and math. That, that it, it's a wonderful school that they have. And um a lot of my kids end up going over there and they, uh, uh, they didn't have a VEX robotics program. So again, that self-advocacy came into play. And one of my students actually emailed the principal and said, Hey, a bunch of us are coming. We're the Albots and we want to continue doing VEX. Um, you know, we, we can do this on our own. We really just need uh, a sponsor, but you know, that can take care of us, but I promise we'll put in all the work and we'll put, and the district's going to support us. And again, that self-advocacy really came through. They started the robotics program. And now year after year, I'm sending kids over there. Well, that program is growing. And just this this last year was the first year uh, ever doing this. That We didn't even make it to the state championship. But on our last chance, our last opportunity, and it's because it was so hard. It was so hard this year. Uh, in the past, we were a combined region. They split up the region. So now the invitations were uh, further and fewer in between. And, you know, just a couple of changes that were made on uh, getting in an invitation uh, became a little bit more rigorous. We're at the last championship where we're, we're, we make it to the, the, the round of 16, then we start going, moving up to the quarterfinals, and then we make it uh, even to the semifinals. What in the semifinals, it's our team paired with uh, Esteban's group. And it was, so we're, we're with Esteban's team, and we're going against... Um, uh, Fausto was in the book uh, as our programmer and Perez, uh, who ended up actually doing the self-advocacy email. 
he was from my first first group um that was there and and uh the two teams ended up beating us and, and it was such a bittersweet moment just seeing how these guys are still into it seeing the passion that they still have into it oh man they're they're and they're so good they've made it to worlds that year they had two those two teams ended up making it to worlds and it's just cool to that, that they still take all the skills that they're learning with me and then and being able to to keep growing and growing those because they, they've surpassed even knowledge that I know. These kids are talking about doing a PID with a, and, and, and all these things. Again, remember, guys, I just came in as an elementary teacher. Anyone can do this. Anyone can do this. So, they're, yes, I will admit that I don't know every single thing. You know, and they're doing PIDs on the coding and, and just these advanced concepts. And, um, it just seeing that they they have kind of grown into an obsession with the robotics thing and still want to keep doing it, you know, in these years later. See that, that yeah, you know, and that that is wonderful because you said, you know, even though you came in and, and this was like, you know, okay, let, let's go ahead and try this out. But man, you know, again, going back to just the time invested and, and really like the way I see it is, you know, you just continually planting that seed. Like, you know, they the kids come through you they built that excitement. They you look at those skills that you just mentioned, you know, as they moved on, the self-advocacy, the communication, they, the determination to continue doing what they're passionate about and being out there, like saying, okay, hey, we just need somebody just to kind of just stand there, like be that supervisor, but we'll take care of everything. Don't even worry about it. We got it, you know, and then for you to have that moment, like kind of full circle where your teams are all there, you know, students that you previously had and i mean as an educator i i think that that is just some of the most memorable things that you can have to see that these students not only did you share with them the little that you knew at that time but man they just dove in deep and continued to grow and i think that that's that's a wonderful story and a wonderful testament to the work that you're doing but also going back to advocating for stem and what stem can do because oftentimes, and, and this is what I often see, you know, they, it, it's like, oh, it's just another thing on the plate. Like this isn't, we don't have time for this. You know, it's mm -hmm. like focus, focus, focus. It's like standardized test after standardized test. Oh no, that that's, and, and all of that is secondary. But when you do have those students that are really passionate and you do take that time, you start seeing that, hey, there are some advantages here, you know, and you see, you, like in what we just saw in the, or what we just heard through that example, the skills and, and that the students can build in that excitement. To people that don't, or to teachers that don't understand it, it's, oh, they're just playing with toys or they're just playing with robots. Like, no, that it's so much more than that. But yeah, um, and Aaron, you know, I, but I don't want to, like, I really want all educators to know that you don't have to have that background in robotics. Mm -hmm. It's all inquiry-based learning from the kids. And, and again, doing those little things like putting your eggs into every single basket, making sure that the notebook is done. Um, even you can do mock interviews with the kids, ask them to explain to you what they've been doing in practice, little things like that. Mm -hmm. The The learning part's gonna come with time, just like anything. Just, and, and even like when I started teaching the class, each year that I teach it, I learn something new as I teach it. And we start implementing those little things. So all, just like anything though, it does take time to develop. Um, but again, it, you know, you. The, the skills that are learned long term and all that for the kids is, is just outweighs anything that's holding any teachers back. But yes, I, I do want to advocate for those teachers and say that all teachers can do this. I was teaching second grade math. I was trying to do uh, social studies. I was my, my wife was a third grade a teacher, is a social studies teacher. She was doing this at a far more competitive level than I was uh, when I'm coming into this. Again, with no background in robotics, so I mean, everyone can do this. I, I know it can feel intimidating. I and and yes, there are kids out there who are being coached by people that are in the field. It, it, just like any competition, there are uh, people that do have amazing coaches. Not to say you're not going to be an amazing coach, um, and let's just say more knowledgeable coaches. There we go. Um, there are going to be more knowledgeable, but any teacher can go in there, step in there, let these kids. Yeah, again, it's that inquiry based. And, and start doing that research and you can facilitate a little bit. There's so many resources that are out there for those kids, including the book. <laughs> including the book. Um, yeah. yeah. Hey, so I we didn't even get to hear though. What what is the title of the book? Oh, meshed gears. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, meshed gears. I I try to 
coming out, you know, I kept thinking about different clever names and, and I really liked, uh, you know, it, it, it's clicking the mesh gears are, are together. Yeah, no, I, I really love that. Like when I cut the title, I was like, oh, this is great. But, you know, now kind of hearing the story behind it and what you're doing, I mean, it, it just, it fits the book so well. And, and in the way, like, at least the way I'm seeing it and interpreting it, but again, this is just the way my mind works. You know, it's like really just meshing the the teacher side of it where you're coaching and helping teachers, but also kind of the the student side of it and how those two worlds work together and the wonder that can come from those two worlds and, and building up Esteban and building up all your students and the skills that you're doing for, you know, for all the students as they continue to grow. And I think it's just a wonderful title. I mean, at least that's the way I'm interpreting it. I could be wrong, but, you know, I loved it. And I just really love the passion that you're coming with, Omar, you and your wife, the work that you're doing, you know, with robotics and also, you know, uh, obviously uh, advocating for girls in STEM too as well, as I know uh, for all our audience members who are just meeting Omar for the first time, remember I said he was a two-time guest, but you can also uh, check out episode 237 where um, Omar is a guest along with his wife and Dan Mance also as well as uh, we were talking about uh, Girl Powered. Um, so, I mean, there's STEM is not just for, you know, the boys, men, you know, we definitely want to advocate for girls in STEM and that way they can continue their learning too as well as we all do. But this is just very powerful because it's not, it's just for all students, the skills, the building, the communication, and just the, the potential of just, you know, that continued growth and just giving them something to be passionate about too, as well. And the world that we live in many times, you know, just so full of so much social media and kids get stuck on social media, but just to be active and using their skills or finding out that they have skills that they didn't know about or interests that they weren't sure about. I mean, it, it's just amazing. So thank you, Omar, for the work that you and your wife are doing and, and just through STEM and, and just the robotics and now with drones. So that's really exciting. So, oh, let me ask you now, because I know that I think the drones, that's something new for you this year. Is that correct? Last year. Last year oh, was last year. year doing so, it. so tell me a little bit about that. Is this something that is just like for within the class or is this also uh, something that's competitive as well? It's both. Uh, so I teach it in the classroom. I have my intro to drones or the drone 101. But uh, we, the REC Foundation, the, the people that host the VEX Robotics competitions uh, have kind of created this. This is their baby. And it is a drones competition. And it's that is also a really, 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 really good uh, intro point to anybody interested in doing uh, STEM with the kids in a competitive way. The reason why I like the drones specifically is because nobody has an advantage of having a better robot in a sense, right? So uh, I, I went back and I, going back to what I was talking about my first year doing this, we had our, our we didn't even make it to the finals. Our robot was crooked. Uh, whenever we would program our robot to to drive forward, it, it kind of would veer off to the right because I, you know the kid built a little imbalance and stuff like that. Um, and 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 so they would program it to play that, or they would they when they would start their autonomous, they would angle it purposely a little bit off to the left. Anyways. There, and, and these kids, when you go compete, some of the kids would show up with these like fancy robots and all these fancy things. In drones, every kid shows up with the same drone. So the kids that put in the time to pilot and just, you know, get really comfortable with those controllers and research, uh, you know, the different flight modes and stuff, uh, can learn a lot about it. And then the programming, it goes into that. So it's a really even, nice playing field. It works just, just like the robotics competition does, where you have your... Um, the, the, the pool play, you know, you get eight matches in, in pool play or six, seven matches of alliance. And then if you once you start making it to those finals, then you start going quarter semi and finals and, and round of 16, just depending on the size of the competition. But yeah, the, it's the aerial drone competition. And the game actually just dropped on Tuesday. And um, we're, my kids are excited to go for year two. Last year was our first year doing it. And as a middle school, we, um, we had two teams and our two teams were the top two ranked teams in the nation and so that was a really cool thing for us to to have and that is amazing and so thank you so much for sharing that so audience members teachers my friends that are out there you're listening to this episode i mean you've heard it from omar you know he came in general ed and all of a sudden he himself too i guess maybe i could say he found his voice in robotics too I as did. well you know and because you never know look at that the, the opportunities that come about and landing on this omar i'm sorry go ahead what you no, 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 no. 
I did. Uh, you know, I, I think that's something I haven't reflected on myself. I, I didn't, I'm not going to say I didn't care about work as much. I guess I can't say it. I'll, I'll just be open about it. I didn't. I, I would, at one point, I was like the, one of those teachers that would kind of just come in and do their job and go home. And, and, but at that time, my work life balance was great. I would, I'd just come in, go to work and do my thing and go. I found something to be passionate about, to strive for it. And, and that's it. And, and before I knew it, I, I was looking forward to those practices and I was looking forward to those Saturdays and I was looking forward. And, um, you know, attending the, like I started attending those conferences and finding these really cool ways to engage with the students and, and, and making activities and finding resources to, because once you buy in, the kids buy in and, and, and I guess the kids see what a passion has become of mine. Um, that they become passionate and, and everyone's just like having so much fun and in the classroom and in the in the competitions. And I thank you, Fonzie. I did find my voice, and I, and I think often I'm always so concerned with not concerned, but always looking for what the kids are doing and with their growth and stuff that I haven't had the time to reflect on my own growth with as an educator. And I found my own passion, and I found my voice. Thank you for that. saying that. Yeah, I feel something there. <laughs> there you go, man. That is awesome because that, that's exactly the same way that I felt too as well, you know, just reflecting on my years. And, and even though I was, it was short-lived, at least my the robotics experience that I was able to give the students while I was in the classroom and a little bit outside the classroom because, of course, then COVID happened and then funding and all of that. But doing those STEM camps, you really like, you know, it, just seeing them grow and really just communicating. And, and, and in some of my students, this is the last year, uh, actually last year, I'm sorry, or this past May, I had my last group of fifth graders uh, that I had that graduated. And so I, it was really great when I got to see them at a meet and they were doing robotics. And one of them came up to me and he goes, hey, Mr. M, like, this is because of you. You know, you introduced this to me in fifth grade you know, science. And, and we were just using like little Ozobots and we were using scratch coding. And then after that, you know, he took off and he was the programmer for the team. And then I had another student also as well in there and it was just wonderful. And you feel like accomplished. You're like, wow, look at what, you know, I was able to do or just inspire them to do, I should say, because at the end, they're the ones that are doing all the work, but it's wonderful to be able to do that. And I'm glad that you found your voice in that because it seems like right now, just the passion that you have for what you're doing is something that is definitely a, a hot flame right now that any students that are coming in for you to, to you this year are definitely going to catch on fire for STEM and for the drones and for robotics and anything else. And it, you're just building this wonderful pipeline, you know, for these amazing future students, educators, engineers, you know, that are going to be out there making a change, you know, because number one, you're showing them how to advocate commune for themselves, communicate, you're showing them critical thinking, you're showing them collaboration, and you're showing them, you know, all of those other soft skills that are truly needed to navigate this space that we're living in now. So just congratulations on your work that you're doing, you, your wife, you know, your school district, big shout out to them for all of the support, you know, and uh, I'm just thankful for this and really excited for the book. You said it might be coming out in the next couple of days. Yes. So and so where can our audience members, those that are listening right now, where can they go and find the book? So first and foremost, uh, if they can follow me on 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 X, Twitter, uh, Mr. Cortez Robotic, there wasn't enough characters for the S, but I will definitely be releasing the, the, the link when it comes on there. And for everyone else, you know, if you don't have social media, it'll be, be on the lookout on Amazon for sure on October 1st. I'm trying to push for earlier now. I'm really just trying to push. Once I get that copy of the of the book in my hand, the the author's print in my hand, I, I, I've gotten proofs before, but the cover that was approved, I still haven't got that one yet. So once I get the author the author's print in my hand for that, um, I will I'm going to say, hey, let's do this, and I'm, I'm going to throw that link on there. It'll just be on Amazon and uh, um, and the, the KDP. But you just look up on Amazon and and um, yeah, it'll mesh gears. It'll be up there October first. I wanted to bump off one more thing um, with my wife uh, on October 26th to any teachers that are out there in, in DFW um, and trying to get maybe some girls into STEM. My wife is hosting the uh, October is the month of the woman and October 26th, she's hosting a girl powered event at our campus uh, where we're going to be doing workshops with the kids and STEM activities. We're going to have um, 
women engineers coming to talk to our kids and hopefully inspire them a little bit. Uh, I know I'll, Esteban and I will be there talking a little bit of, to them about our, our time in STEM, but this, I, they, I know that this is all about the girls. And so uh, I'll, I'll be hosting like a little programming session myself and her girls are going to be host. Uh, the, her team is going to be hosting all the little events. Anyone in the DFW, just look out for that on, uh, if you do events, it'll be on our, on uh, robot events.com and, and yeah, just go off to, uh, the girl powered event in Dallas. We'll all be the right. one in October 26th. Awesome. Well, you know what? I mean, we still have some time, like, well, not for the show today, but we still have some time in September. So if Patricia is listening, you know, and she loves to, and she would love to come and be a guest on the show, just to talk a little bit about the event before we start in October for, you know, women's month and things of that sort. And that way we can build some hype up for that event too, as well with our audience members, or at least just to advocate and, and share, you know, the organizations that are, that are out there in promoting women in STEM, girls in STEM, and so on, and the importance of that. I would love to have her on the show. So I don't know if she's sitting right there next to you, you or not. <laughs> she absolutely would love to, Fonzie. And yes. say, oh my gosh. And she yes. can go on about her little lady bots and all this, the fun stuff that goes out there. I love it. I love it. So the invitation is there, Patricia. You know, let me know. We'll make it happen. Shoot me a uh, DM and everything. And We'll we'll get we'll get that scheduled and again just to build up some hype and more most importantly also just in a very similar way to Omar just really sharing the amazing work that not only you guys are doing but amplifying what students are doing and how students are growing and again focusing on that process instead of just that final product and I know in the end the final product is what wins the championships and so on but just the process in getting there and building and growing and building not only the robot, but building oneself up to as well through robotics is definitely a story that really needs to be told. And so we can continue to advocate for STEM. As cliche as it sounds, it's, it's definitely more than just the robots, man. And, and I don't know if it's good or bad, but once we get to the, our, our goal is to get to worlds. And once we get to worlds, it's all about the fun we have there. You know, yes, we do practice with the teams when we get there. We try to be the best team that we can be. But once we're there, man, we're, uh, I, I usually leave and do like a little scavenger hunt for the kids to go talk to them. Go take a picture with a kid from another continent. Go have a kid write your name in a different language. Go, go meet out this fun and make these memories. And it's definitely more than the robots, man. Awesome. I love it. Well, Omar, thank you so much for sharing your story. And Meshed Gears is the book. But Omar, you're not off the hook yet, because as you know, we always love to end the show with the last three questions. All right. So I know I put them there in the calendar invite, but I think I I, I updated that a little late uh, this time for you. So it's OK. Like we're going to go ahead and just take it slow and take it easy. But they are very similar um, to the ones that I asked all my audience members also towards the end. So here we go. Question number one. All right. So as we know. Every superhero has a point of weakness, you know, so we know, for example, with Superman, when he was around kryptonite, it's like kind of just weakened him as far as, you know, the the power that he had. So now I want to ask you in the current state of education, what would you say is your current edu kryptonite? In the current state of education, my current kryptonite, let's see what what really. Like, what would be that pain point right now for you that you're like, oh, like, I wish this could change this kind of like, uh, it hurts when I listen to this or hear it. <laughs> oh, that's a tough one. Let's see. Uh, you know, the, this is going to be a little bit biased, but I would love to have more time with the fun stuff with the kids as far as like with my own kids. Um the the competition and they're all my kids obviously with my competitions and I, I I wish that we can have just a little bit more time because you know obviously with time everything develops more and and I don't want to take up too much of their time and I still want to live a regular life <laughs> so I don't know if I can just have built in time or some kind of extended days with with the kids built into my day so that we can all <laughs> have a normal uh, so I can have a normal work that life balance the kids can. You know, they, they have to be able to do their homework. That alone keeps me. So just, I don't know. My kryptonite would be that I wish I could have more time with more those time. kids because I I feel like I'm at, at my best uh, when working with them as an educator um, in that non, non, uh, what's, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, 
like structured um, mode when, when it's just kind of us mm -hmm. practicing learning when the kids are learning what they want to learn when they're inquiring about what they want to inquire. And, and I think as an educator, I appreciate that more as they're, you know, building that, that up themselves and, and learning that themselves and all that stuff. So I'd nice. love to see more of that. I would definitely love to see more of it. Oh, I love that. That's wonderful. That's a great answer, Omar. All right, here we go. Question number two. Who is someone that you'd like to trade places with for a day and why? Someone I'd like to trade places with for a day. I think uh, I, um, someone that I find interesting is like Elon Musk. And, and, and it is, you know, it, strictly on his like, on his STEM stuff, like with the whole SpaceX and, and the the development of the Teslas and I really think that that and, and the hey the money that I'd have for that day would be fun too. But uh man, you know, just I feel like that man, that man's mind is, is I'd love to see his thought process and and and, 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 and what where he's going with that. Like I, I really think Elon Musk is a very interesting character and person. Um and you know, I, I like what he's doing with the whole STEM stuff. You know, but again, it's the the specifically with uh, SpaceX and Tesla. So, yeah. There you go. That's a good one, actually. That's a good one, actually. Like I, I'm about an let's say maybe an hour and fifteen minutes away here from SpaceX here at Boca Chica Beach here in South Texas. So that's been great to kind of go and visit and see and have and you know it's pretty interesting stuff. So yeah, I definitely would agree with you. Are Just, you allowed to visit? Yes. Oh. I've gone, I've, I've drove through Houston before and stopped at NASA on my way to Galveston, different beach. Uh, on my way to Galveston, I've mm -hmm. got to go to NASA before, but I'd love to go visit SpaceX. I didn't know you can. Yeah. If you ever, hey, if you're ever down here, we'll, we'll get together and we'll take a trip over there and stuff like that. You know, you're more than welcome. I mean, mi casa su casa. So <laughs> we can make a day out of it and we can meet in person and we can take a drive down there depending on where y'all are staying. And, you know, it's great. You can go drive right up and take pictures and everything. And it's really great. And then, of course, you get South Padre Island right there also as well, which is a great place to visit and everything. Uh, so beautiful. I haven't been yeah. there since a long time. <laughs> I'm going to take you up on that. I'm definitely um, now I'm going to plan something out on my wife so we can get out to go visit uh, SpaceX. Man. That's yeah, crazy. that'd be great. All right. And the last question, Omar, is if you could have a billboard with anything on it, what would it be and why? Right now, it would be the title of my book so we can get more, <laughs> more people to get out there reading and so I can share my story out to more people. That is just a biased thing right now. <laughs> no, but I love it. it. I mean, it's great. Just meshed gears. and meshed then gear. Have the cover know, on there. This, yeah. Oh, you know what I was thinking? Room. I was thinking like those uh, kind of, you know, like those Bucky signs, like Bucky's and then Bucky's at so many miles and so on. It would be like meshed gears. And then the next one could be something like finding your voice or something like that. Like, yeah, I don't know. I'm just picturing that like as a mar as a former marketing guy, like before education, like just something that will catch people's attentions and then it just gets them intrigued. And then on the last one will be like a QR code or like a link to go to straight yeah, to it. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm curious as to how that uh, movie um, Spare Parts was uh, was. was advertised now that I think about it. You know, I, I didn't even know about that movie until I met my wife either. But I, like it had George Lopez in it and um oh uh, what's her name? Uh anyway the big movie, big budget and I didn't remember it. Like it, it must have just slipped my radar up or fallen through the radar for me. I'm curious as to how they advertised it. Maybe I should have followed some of that pattern. But yeah. There you definitely go. maybe even have like those animated billboards or they can kind of like show like the the flashing of the book. Oh my gosh, something I didn't talk about really quick was just the uh, the illustrations of my book. My cousin Illust shout out to my cousin for the illustrations. They're amazing. I'm not I'm not just joking, I'm not being biased. They're amazing. Uh, I, I told him my vision of what I wanted and he made it happen. But every single illustration in that book comes from a real picture. So whether it was a notebook entry that was animated, uh, or illustrated illustrated, I'm sorry, or the um the the pictures of the kids. They're, they're, they're literally pictures of the kids from like when they won tournaments. They were illustrated too. And, and, and oh, it, it is so cool. So definitely uh, having those illustrations on that billboard would be really cool. That is awesome. That is great. Well, I'm really excited, Omar. Like I can't wait for the book to get out and everything. And then of course, just 
be, being able to see it out in teachers' hands and so on. And we'll make sure also that we'll update the link. As soon as you have that link, I'll definitely update it here on my page as well. So as people come and visit the episode, they can get a direct link to your page or, or to the book page. So that way they can make a purchase and everything, because this is, again, it, it, it's a win-win. Again, it's the teacher side of walking other educators that might be interested in to, to get into robotics, but also seeing the student side and just the growth that students can have as well. So again, it's called Meshed Gears. So make sure you check it out. So thank you, Omar, again, for your time. Thank you so much for your passion and just really giving us a, an opportunity to hear this wonderful story and giving us the opportunity to amplify your work. And obviously the book, and that's something that's very important and also to advocate for STEM. So thank you for your time today. And we look forward to also having Patricia on the show too. You know, yes, she's getting I'm ready for her event next month as well. And for all our audience members, those of you that are listening right now or are going to be checking out the replay through our podcast player, please make sure that you, uh, you know, continue to subscribe to our content. Please make sure that you jump over to our YouTube channel. Give us a thumbs up and a like also as well. And as always, check out this amazing episode and the other 292 episodes that we have now with amazing educators, creators, education professionals, where you can take some knowledge nuggets and sprinkle them onto what you are already doing great. And as always, thank you for all of your support. And don't forget, my friends, until next time, stay techie.